Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I will show you my easy method for bottom yeast harvesting. Ok before we get started with the method there are a few rules I'm afraid that I have to enforce. The first one being that everything must be clean and sanitised. This of course is something we're all used to with beer brewing but it becomes totally essential when handling yeast. You don't want anything to go wrong here. Secondly, all glass containers need to be boiled. I do this for about 10 minutes. And then lastly, all the water that we use needs to be pre-boiled and then allowed to cool. So we've got our fermentation vessel here and we've obviously transferred the beer into a keg or into bottles at this stage. And I've added a couple of litres of pre-boiled and cooled water to this and I'm now swilling it around the fermentation vessel just to pick up all of the yeast that's on the bottom. Once you're satisfied that you've done this, then you now need to pour this into your glass jar. Once you've done this, you then stick it in the fridge, I would say for about a day, just to allow all of the yeast to go down to the bottom. Some people do it quicker than this, but for me a day works perfect. I know all of the yeast is now out of suspension and at the bottom of our jar. Our yeast is the white line that you see between the liquid and the gunk at the bottom. So our task now is to get as much of that yeast as possible and as little liquid as possible too. To do this I have some items on the table here that are incredibly useful. The first is a separatory flask or funnel. This is perched on top of a piece of uh, kitchen glassware which is used for holding spaghetti. Then we have a lab plastic container which will hold the yeast and we have some tape. The sort of tape that you would use when decorating that's easily removed. Because my separatory flask is only one litre in capacity I need to decant some of this very slowly before I begin. So now I've added a funnel to the top of the flask and what I'm going to do is gently decant all of this into the actual flask, being very, very careful not to add any of the trub at the bottom. You can see that already some of the yeast has started to settle at the bottom, but of course we want all of it down there. So for this reason we now leave this doing its thing for about 24 hours. Sadly I don't have space for this in my fridge, but I have placed it somewhere where cats and children and all sorts of other things can't get at it. So it's now 24 hours later and I think you'll agree there's quite a big difference between the amount of yeast that we have at the bottom here now. So I've now got my container which is actually full of star sand and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dip the flask into it just to sanitise the end. I guess you've been wondering what the tape is used for and this is basically to tape the tube to the actual flask. Just part of my ghetto method. Of course there is equipment you can buy that will uh, remove the need for this, but um, yeah, I can't really see the point in putting lots of money into this when this works just great. Okay, so that's all secure now, and now I'm opening the valve at the bottom of the flask. You don't necessarily need to open this the whole way, just a little bit will do. The flask is then returned to our ghetto holder, and we simply wait. After a short time what you should see is yeast making its way into the container. You can see a reasonable amount of yeast starting to collect at the bottom. Naturally some of the diluted beer will actually follow into this. Don't worry about that and make sure you top up with water. This vial of yeast is then added to the fridge for safekeeping. If you intend to use it before three months time you don't need to wash it any further. If not, then gently decant it and replace the element, uh, which still has some alcohol in it, with fresh water. Many people have found that storing the yeast in this state, it can last for up to six months. Before using this yeast again, I would recommend that you put it on a stir plate uh, to harvest it further and to keep its health up. So there you go. Easy beer yeast bottom harvesting is now complete. Naturally what you could do with this yeast now is actually dry it. 
Um, if you haven't seen it already, I do have a beer yeast drying guide as well. I do hope you found this guide to be useful. As always, if you have any questions, just pop them in the uh, text below the video on YouTube. So if you did like this video, then please do go ahead and like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I've got a lot of videos in the pipeline for the future, so if you're interested in uh, seeing what I've got coming up, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I've covered in this video or in others, or anything to do with brewing in general, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. I'm more than happy to help. Until then, happy brewing!